Hello and welcome back. This module is a interesting module. It's a continuation after what you after to answer the question, what after five y's? I have done my multi y analysis. It is reasonable. I have checked it with customers. I have checked it with data. I have checked it, and I think it the the chain of reasoning is valid from one y to the other. It's uh, it works. So. Now what is the big question? Should I straight away jump into a solution saying I will solve it right now with any solution? Um, the answer is yes and no. So uh, I have heard of this adage, uh, this saying, this maxim so to speak is that a story without a conflict is a boring thing. right? So if there is no conflict, there is no bad guy or bad situation. The story is pretty boring. I woke up in the morning, I brushed my teeth, I had my breakfast, I went to work, I came back from work and I ate my, I mean I had lunch in between, I had dinner at after I came back from work and I went to bed. This is a straightforward story with no conflict, nothing going on. So conflict is essential to a story as much as it is to our design thinking module that we are looking at the analysis or the analyze module. So the first one we, we reasoned out why uh, a certain thing happening, why and we ran four or five times. Uh, you can go as many as you want, uh, but we can stop at a level where we are comfortable. We have uh, a skill set that uh, that you can use to solve the problem at there. Usually what happens, like I am using a but, uh, so uh, that is what comes in the way, it gets in the way and that could be the challenge that you have to overcome. So no solution is perfect, so any solution that you think of implement or uh, even, uh, uh, even are prototyping to put together. Uh, will have some kind of flaw, some kind of uh, challenge and that is the conflict. Uh, even if you do not have a solution, the, the situation per se uh, is uh, also uh, subjected to such a conflict, such a conflict. We are calling it the conflict of interest. I have heard of uh, the creators of South Park, the animated series and adult animated series. Uh, the, uh, creators uh, came up with a very, very easy simple concept uh, is can I replace all the and uh, that they use in their uh, story, in their structure with a but uh, and it made it pretty interesting the whole read up. So this is the uh, yes but stage as uh, is also used in, uh, I have heard it being used in uh, the Disney creative methodology, they use a yes but to create uh, a conflict, create doubt, create challenges so that you can solve it, the protagonist in stories can solve it and become the uh, eventual victors over the bad guys uh, or eventually uh, they overcome the obstacle which is the challenge, the conflict and uh, are happy uh, or whatever. So that is that's something that you can are true with stories is to true with our uh, design thinking module as well. So I am calling it the conflict of interest because lots of times the conflict that we see is between two humans, human actors or between a human and a thing, uh, an object, uh, an animal, I do not know. So it is usually the, it is one of these two that the conflict lies uh, between. So that is why uh, party A wants something, party B wants something else, then we have a conflict. If they want the same thing, there is no conflict, they are they're happy. Okay? But if they want different things, then it is a, it's a conflict. Like we saw in the earlier case uh, when I was explaining the five whys concept is the customer, uh, person who is getting his uh, vehicle serviced wanted the service center to be close to his home, whereas the uh, the, the person who is servicing the vehicle, the, the company, they 
would not have that, uh, they, th that would mean spending a lot of money and putting it uh, all over the city and that is not going to be possible. So, now we are looking at a conflict. Uh, if he had the resources and he built lots of service centers, there is no conflict, it is an easy solution for, for him. Spend the money, put up the service centers. So, that would be. But again, there is a, a catch there. Now, I will have to staff them, I will have to train them. So, these are challenges for this entrepreneur. So, no solution is actually perfect, that is that's what you find out. So, our job as design thinkers is to unearth these conflicts of interest and that is where the interesting stuff is. You can solve them and, and you can be, uh, give the world be your beautiful solutions and of course, you will find more flaws with that and provide more beautiful solutions. This is a cycle, uh, the, the karmic cycle so to speak and it keeps going. So, we will start with very, very simple example, an interesting one, an example from Alexander Dumas book called Three Musketeers, which is so many times they have taken movies. If you look at the screen right now, you can see three figures, this is, these are Lego figures of these three people from the Three Musketeers. The one on your left is my uh, main character, uh, well not in the story, but in my, my story, he is the main character called Porthos. The other two guys are Arthos and Aramos, totally they make the three musketeers. So, Porthos, your uh, bearded guy, he was a great swordsman, he was fiercely dedicated to the three musketeers, he was very loyal guy, uh, often seen as the comic relief uh, among these three, the other two were probably serious. Uh, although the Lego uh, block actually shows him to be the most serious, and actually he is the funniest guy, I, I love him. He was also a quirky guy, he had funny characteristics about him. One of the most uh, funny ones that is important for our story that I am going to describe is that he did not like to be touched, physically touched. If somebody touched him, off came his sword and off came that person's head. That is not an interesting proposition for the person who is touching him, a conflict of interest uh, if you will. Okay? So, imagine, take a moment and imagine if you are his tailor and by the way another characteristic that Porthos had was that he loved fashionable clothes. So, if you are his tailor and you have to get clothes stitched for him, you cannot touch him. So, and uh, if you go by how tailors actually measure up for a person like Porthos who is well built and uh, uh, you know burly, uh, you are going to need a measuring tape and you are going to have to touch him to measure uh, his dimensions so that you can get fa his fashionable clothes ready. Okay? So, in this, uh, if, if you are the tailor, I only pity you, if you are the tailor, I really pity you because uh, you are going to have a very uncomfortable uh, situation in your hands. So, let us frame it as a conflict of interest between these two parties. Uh, party 1, Porthos, who wants fashionable clothes uh, stitched. Party 2 is you, the tailor, who has to stitch his clothes and has to get him measured without touching him. Okay? Let us look at how the conflict looks like in graphical format. Okay. You are Porthos's tailor and you have a measuring tape at your disposal. Okay. So, this is your main uh, instrument of choice, so to speak, your measuring tape. So, you have two choices. You can either use your measuring tape and take your measurements or do not use your measuring tape and take your measurements. How? You can eyeball the guy, you can, oh, you are an experienced tailor, I know, I know you, you are an, you are, uh, have year, years of experience measuring, um, you know, people up. So, you can size him up just by looking at it, this burly uh, swords, swashbuckling swordsman, you can probably uh, eyeball and write down his measurements. Okay? Now, what happens is the following, if you do not use the measuring tape. Let us take that case for, uh, for, for argument's sake. Let us say you do not use a measuring tape, use your vast experience and the good part that you can see in green is that there is no touching. Great! That satisfies one condition that Porthos has is there is no touching going on. Whereas, 
what happens is that you with your eyeballing with your vast experience still have poorly fit clothes bad fitting clothes so and that does not go very well with our Mr. Porthos he is not going to like you because you have stitched bad fitting clothes for him so what does he do he takes his sword out off goes your head not a good proposition let us consider the other uh, scenario where you do use a measuring tape and you go and take all the measurements from Mr. Porthos and uh, as a result this is represented by the green box the measurements are perfect absolutely perfect they run very well Mr. Porthos is happy because uh, the clothes fit well but in the process of measuring you touched him and off went your head you probably never find out if the uh, clothes are stitched well or not okay so as designers as design thinkers we are in a in a manner of speaking greedy people we want no touching and we want measurements to be perfect these are from two perspectives so to speak for good fitting clothes your measurements have to be perfect and for to keep Porthos happy you cannot touch him so these are two criteria that will give you the desired result uh, that you are seeking in this problem this is the conflict that you have to resolve but as you can see use the measuring tape off goes your head and you do not use measuring tape off goes your head you have to solve this scenario thankfully we are just simulating we are not actually doing this uh, so your head still remains in place okay so some of the solutions that probably you can think of at this moment is that well if he has old clothes I would just get that and give it to him and that will probably solve the problem great that is great so we can actually uh, solve this uh, by giving him uh, old clothes giving the tailor giving you the, the old uh, clothes and that will probably solve it for you however I wonder who stitched those previous old clothes of Porthos hmm question to be answered that is that is a conflict again so you you have got one and you have got the other so uh, you keep going so next next solution say I give you one more quirk uh, that he has is he loved food he appreciated wine so my solution would be you know feed him wine uh, till he is absolutely stoned he is flat he cannot move anymore so he cannot even detect whether he are touching him or not he would never remember and then you can go and take your measurements that would be another solution there you do use the measuring tape your measurements are perfect and you have touched him uh, but he does not know that you have touched him so that way you are satisfying the customer that he thinks you have not touched him but you still got your measurements okay so another quirk of uh, Porthos's character so more you know about Porthos you can actually get more solutions so the another quirk uh, of his character was that he loved his ladies he had many uh, relationships going on at the same time so you could actually train one of his mistresses to do the measurement so he would allow his women to touch him and you could actually get the measurements done so that way you are not touching him so there is touching going on but tailor touching Porthos does not happen so that way no touching is satisfied whereas still the measurements are perfect because you train one of the ladies to to actually do the measurement for you so this is how we think that these two criteria are absolutely uncompromisable that you should get criteria 1 r1 plus should, has to be satisfied and r2 plus also has to be satisfied so the solution that the tailor adopted in this case is to use the mirror reflection this way there is no touching and you just had to ask Porthos to move around and he would make the measurements quite accurately yeah you could argue but yeah this was the Taylor's solution that that worked very well this is a example described in and suddenly the inventor appeared a book by uh, Jendrik Altshuler uh, this is a fun problem that was there I thought I could bring this to your attention and actually highlight the conflict of interest for you I have another example that we have already looked at and I am going to look at it from this time from a conflict of interest perspective because we have already applied 5 wise to this problem 
and we are actually going to see what is the conflict in this case. Okay. So, in this case, if you remember this case, uh, we had the student who showed up late every time and I asked him why and we drilled down to three levels, but we are picking up on level two where he is late because he went to bed late. That is why he showed up late. If he had woken up early, he would be on time. So, this is as simple as that. So, there is no conflict in this. He just has to wake up early to be on time. That is as simple as that. However, we realize that he has been going to sleep late because he had too many deadlines. So, this is actually the conflict that he has too many deadlines and that way he would never be able to actually go to bed early. So, the conflict in the way I have defined in my graphical format that you saw with Parthosis Taylor, here is the student and what we have in our control is the hour of going to sleep. So, he goes to sleep late. The positive is that his course deadlines are satisfied. So, that is one thing that he does not have to worry, but he has to deal with me because he comes late to class every time because all these course deadlines on piling on his neck. Okay. So, that is scenario 1 and if we change the hour of sleep, he wakes up early, great, I am a happy professor that he comes to class on time. However, he goes on missing other courses, deadlines and uh, the other professors will not like that uh, and he is he's probably his graduation will be on the line. Uh, so, his neck is on the line so to speak. So, the conflict as we have defined it is that he has to satisfy both these criteria of coming to class on time. I do not want to see him late because he may be missing something important at the start of the class. At the same time, he should not miss out on his course deadlines being satisfied. So, the design thinking solution should address this and this is what we are seeking. Any solution that you suggest to solve this problem has to satisfy both these criteria. The R1 plus of all the course deadlines satisfied and R2 plus of him coming to my class on time. Okay, so, this is the conflict as we have highlighted. So, this is a visual way to uh, convey this conflict, uh, conflict. It is easier to demonstrate it to anybody. So, whenever you are um, figuring out where, what is the conflict, it is easier to uh, draw it in this manner and uh, to explain it to somebody is also quite easy and also they can see it in colors that yes, green is the stuff I want and red is the stuff I do not want. So, he has to go to sleep early to do this and he has to go to sleep late. So, he you can actually do this work on this. So, this model is called element name value E N V element name value. So, all the elements are described, the values here are described and the names are given as well. So, so this is what we mean by element name value method of describing a conflict. So, this is a great model for to understand a conflict. So, you can do some exercises that uh, you can do on your own to see how to figure this out. I will post the answers the next week, next time we meet, we will actually discuss the answers we have for these exercises. I am going to give you three problems. You can pick one, uh, pick two for practice. If you are uh, very confident, you can even go to the third one and do it. So, these are three problems that I will describe and you can uh, first do a multi y analysis of the problem and then do a conflict of interest analysis of the problem. So, that you figure out what is the exact problem that needs to be solved or, or you can figure out all problems and do all multi y in different directions and you can make your life complicated and, and see how to solve them all. Uh, this is also possible uh, once you get mastery over how to think in terms of whys and conflicts. So, the exercises that I am going to give are three problems. The first one is interesting. This is a classroom setup probably in rural India and uh, the teacher is busy teaching to all the children. Now, look at the kid here who is clearly distracted. I guess he does not have an iPad or a tablet or a mobile phone, but I do not know what he is up to, but he is not focused on the class. So, he is a distracted child. So, 
this problem is about teachers and children. So, these are the two conflicting parties if you can think of that. So, here the teacher is trying to teach and the child here is not paying attention. Maybe the other children are uh, looking at what the teacher is teaching, but probably are not following. So, this is a typical classroom scenario where all children probably do not follow at the same pace uh, and some of them are going fast, they are able to follow the teacher. On the other hand, maybe there are some of them are lagging behind. So, here the scenario is that the teacher wants to finish uh, their syllabus on time, which means she has to keep the pace up, she has to, she has to keep uh, going and this is not a recorded session like what we are doing with, with, with you, but uh, this is a uh, live session where she has to change pace according to how people understand and if you have a large class like what you see in the picture, it is going to be a challenge for the teacher to keep every child on board. So, this is a challenge that uh, teachers often face. Um, so, you have to highlight why is this happening and what is the exact conflict between the children and the teacher. So, uh, she has to finish. So, the requirements being she has to finish, I am going to give you some clues here. Uh, she has to finish her syllabus on time. Um, she can go fast or slow. Uh, the children have to keep up with her and also keep track of their learning. So, you will have to do the reasoning on why these things are happening up to any level you want and see if it matches up to what I have done in my reasoning and we will see this next class. So, this is the problem number 1. Like I said earlier, you can do one of the 3 problems. So, we will go to the next problem. This is a space shuttle, a reusable space vehicle. This was originally launched in the 60s, 70s and has been on, tested and launched in the 60s, 70s. This has been on for a while. Many, many uh, space shuttles have been launched and uh, they have safely landed back. So, I am going to describe to you not only about space shuttle, but also about any aeroplane that you probably have seen landing on a runway like what you see in your picture. What I would like to demonstrate to you is the fact that there is a lot of smoke when the airplane touches, in this case the space shuttle, touches the tarmac or the runway. So, the reason I am going to give you one of the why's is the reason there is a lot of smoke as you can imagine. I will give you some time, you want to think about it, okay, you can pause the video and think about it. Okay. So, some spoilers for you, uh, you can still pause. The reason there is a lot of smoke, puff of smoke coming in the back of the wheel is that there is a lot of friction between the wheel and the runway. So, the plane is very, very fast when it lands. Obviously, the ground is at, is not moving, it is at 0 speed. So, that is going to le lead to a lot of friction and hence leads to a lot of smoke and not only it's smoke, the smoke is because of all the tire wear. Okay. So, you can do this uh, say, I do not know, I am not an aerospace engineer, but probably I am guessing probably a few times before the tire wears out and this could be a problem uh, of the tire wearing out. Okay. So, now you will have to think about how do I do the 5 Y's on this particular problem. I will give you a hint again like I did for the earlier problem is that uh, the speed of the uh, aircraft cannot be slowed down. Why? Uh, because uh, it might stall as I have read in some magazines, uh, aerospace magazine is that the aer airplane actually stalls if you slow down too much. So, there is a certain prescribed speed that you cannot go below. Okay? So, that is what you have to look at. So, you have to think about what are the 5 Y's, few Y's at least, uh, 1 or 2 or 3 as much as you can find out and now do a conflict analysis of the parties at conflict, uh, possibly a hint hint, uh, possibly the tire and the and the runway. Okay, so you can look at it and see what the conflict is. We will cover this in the next time. The third problem that I'm going to cover is a sweet problem, as I call it. is It's a very sweet problem. One of my favorite problems because I love to solve this problem. This is the company Hershey's. They posted a problem on an open innovation platform and they wanted to solve this problem. 
Okay. So, what the problem was simply that they wanted to transport say a container of Hershey's chocolates uh, like this. I love chocolates by the way. They wanted to transport this chocolates from one geography to another. The only problem is that the other geography is it's very hot and so what happens when uh, chocolates actually are taken to hot conditions? Simple. Have you guessed it? Yes, it, it melts. It can actually melt. The, the chocolates do not take, uh, are not very good at high temperatures. So, I would guess about 25 degrees centigrade are, are to do right for these chocolates. So, if their ambient temperature is very, very high, say in the order of 30, 35 degrees or 40 degrees, uh, it is going to be uh, very difficult transporting these chocolates. So, the condition from Hershey's is that yes, you can design a, a packaging uh, which they already have to transport, but it needs to be able to withstand this change in temperature, but at the same time it has to be very cheap, okay? very, very inexpensive. If possible, do without um, costly material or tough to assemble material, uh, then you are okay. Uh, that is the problem that was posted. Again, we will analyze this next time using five whys and uh, the conflict of interest. Again, a hint in this case would be that the parties in conflict uh, is the chocolate itself and the ambient air around the uh, chocolate. So, you can take a stab at these three problems. In one you can analyze on your own. If you are confident, go to the next one and I will be very happy if you can, uh, if you can attempt all three. So, that is it for today. Uh, we will see you next time with the analysis of these three problems. Okay, take care. Bye.